If you want to understand something, a philosophy, a religion, go to the primary sources. Read their own literature. Always remember that. When I started studying Islam, and then I went on to college and got a master's degree from a major uh, military university called Norwich University, I got a master's degree in diplomacy and international terrorism. I did enormous, hundreds of hours of research on Islam, and never one time did I read a book against Islam. I thought, well, if I'm going to understand it, I need to understand it from their writings, their history their theology, their revered records that they all study. So I'm talking about their leaders. <clears throat> so what I'm about to share with you is from their material and it is highly revered and they look at it as a great and awesome victory and it's the foundation, part of the foundation that I discussed with you of why Muslims feel justified in visceral hatred of the Jews and in their annihilation. When Muhammad was alive, there was a group of Jews living in a city and they were called the Banu Quraiza, <clears throat> the tribe of Quraiza. And there were hundreds and hundreds of Jewish families and they formed a confederation with some of Muhammad's political enemies, which came to nothing, totally came to nothing. Muhammad was out quelling this little turbulence. The Jews never took up arms against him. But they sided with the people that were trying to stop Muhammad, the growth of Muhammad's political leadership. Muhammad was going home and he said that the angel Gabriel showed up to him and in effect told him that he was sending Muhammad back to bring the judgment of God upon the Jews of Banu Quraiza. So Muhammad went and the very long story short is the Jews were given the opportunity to either fight or to surrender and to submit to the judgment. Other Jews had done so and were allowed to emigrate, to leave the Arabian Peninsula and take with them what they could, but then all the houses and the product and the chattel goods that were left went into the hands of Muhammad and his followers. So they probably thought, well, this, will, this is what's going to happen to us. Muhammad picked a man named Saad to render the judgment, and he said, I give the judgment that their warriors should be killed and their children and women should be taken as prisoners. And then, the text says, the prophet then remarked, O Saad, you have judged among them with the judgment of the king, Allah. Another eyewitness account said, you have, Muhammad said that you have judgment, you have judged them with the judgment of the seventh heaven. In other words, <clears throat> Muhammad said, this is what God wants. So what they did was they, they took all of the young boys to see if they had hit puberty. Stripped them naked, saw if they'd hit puberty. If they had hit puberty, they were beheaded. And the women and the, and the children were then dispersed as slaves. But listen to what this historic record says, okay? This is really critical. Then the apostle went out to the market of Medina, which is still the market today, and dug trenches in it. Then he sent for them and struck off their heads in those trenches as they were brought out to him in batches. This went on until the apostle made an end to them. Among them was the enemy of Allah, Huya bin Aktub and Ka'ab, Asad their chief, and they were brought out with their hands bound to their neck by a rope. There were 600 or 700 in all, though some put the figure as high as 800 or 900. <clears throat> Notice, this is from Ibn Ishaq, Life of Muhammad, one of the most revered, if not the most revered history of the life of Muhammad. It says that the apostle went out. This all happened in Medina, by the way, which is where Muhammad lived and where he died. The apostle went out. The apostle dug trenches. He struck off their heads. So when the Muhammad was doing the chopping or whether he was ordering the chopping or it was a mixture of both, he's got his hands in it. His hands are covered with blood and he literally, brutally annihilated every single Jew. They dug trenches. It, it, it looks and feels like World War II, the Holocaust. They dug trenches, had the men kneel over the trenches, cut off their heads and then push their bodies into the trenches. Can you imagine the blood? Can you imagine the stench? 
the horror. That is why Muslims today feel totally justified in annihilating them. Because that's what Muhammad did. And then this is what the Quran says about that event. And he brought those people of the book, that's the Jews, who supported them, the, that little cabal I was telling you about. He brought those people of the book who supported them from their fortresses and cast terror into their hearts. Some of them you slew and some you took prisoners. And he made you heirs of their lands, their houses and their goods and of a land which you had not frequented. And Allah has power over all things. So the Quran, which is the word of God to Muslims, inspired by God himself, the very words of God, God says this was a great miracle. Some of them you slew. That was the men. They chopped off their heads and the teenage boys. Some of them you took prisoners and God gave you their houses. So the Muslim reading this says, man, if it's good enough for Muhammad, it's good enough for me. What would Muhammad do? What did he do? That's what I want to do. And oh, by the way, he took one young lady, Rehana, and made her his sex slave. And she was with him as his concubine until the day he died. That's what we're dealing with with Islam, people. When we come back, I'm going to tell you one other story which shows the root of their, their hatred for the Jews. Mm -hmm.